My dad is actually infected and we're trying to clean him up today. And I don't mean my dad is physically infected. I mean, his computer is infected with malware. And so let's go ahead, let's jump into it. I want to show you all just kind of the steps in Sentinel-1 to be able to kind of like quickly clean up an infection. I also want to show you, I'm going to link this article. It talks about incident response and we want to go learn, you want to make sure you commit this to memory. So preparation, detection, identification, and containment, eradication, and recovery and restoration. So we're going to do probably, we're going to start here. So the detection and stuff like that, this is where we are. We have the ability to detect it and kind of understand what it is. Identification, we kind of understand the threat. Sentinel-1 is going to help us to do that. And then we're going to do some containment here. So let's go ahead and start an interface. And one of the things you got to make sure is it wasn't online. So I got the machine powered up. Now it's talking to the Sentinel-1 console. And so in the, the event of an infection like this, one of the things that I typically want to do like to err on the side of safety is I want to go ahead and I want to make sure that this machine is actually in a mode that's not like spread into other machines. And so what I'm going to do is, is we're going to go here and we're going to go to not tech support agent actions. We don't want to move it to another site endpoint action. We don't want to do that response. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we want to issue a disconnect from network. And what that does is that means that the machine can't talk to anything but Sentinel one. So that's going to stop this from potentially infecting other machines. So the remote mic will be disconnected from the network. Uh, the remote, what is remote endpoint? So we're going to, have to approve that action and we're going to click disconnect. Now, a lot of times you might interpret that means it's going to physically disconnect it, but no, once again, it's just making sure the machine can't communicate with anything but Sentinel one. So now that that's taken place, uh, I'm going to go, I feel like, okay, safer. Mm -hmm. It's not going to necessarily like impact other machines at this point because it's actually disconnected. You still got a notification because I have notifications turned on because I want to know anything that's going on in my console since I do have the mentees just to make sure everything is safe and they're not impacting anything else. All right, so now that I've actually disconnected from the network, let's go ahead and click on it. And I'm just going to go to the threat section. Sorry, I mean, and this is kind of what it's identifying. Okay, so I don't know what that is. It looks like it looks suspicious. It looks like it's potentially randomly generated. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it here in Sentinel-1. It's going to give me some information. So it looks like program files x86 radio rage. Okay, so I'm not sure what that is, but it gives me the full path. It gives me exactly kind of what the process user is running as a system. So that means it's got permissions to do pretty much whatever it wants. Uh, it talks about MindSpark interactive network. So remember, we've already kind of stopped it from spreading. So I want to see what this is. MindSpark uh developing marketing and entertainment software so i'm thinking you know my dad he worked as a security guard he uses pc mainly to play like movies and stuff like that which was kind of dvds and stuff like that or cds or whatever well dvds of course he didn't really play any cds all right and so i'm assuming that this somehow could have been related to some of the software but it looks like they're known for the development of marketing entertainment and personal computing software as well as mobile application development Okay, all right, so that gives us a clue here of kind of what it is. You see that it is a signed certificate, signed and verified, so that's cool. So they don't have like a fake or unsigned executable. So it's very likely that this did come from a company, but I want to dig a little bit further. And so let's see, we can download the threat files, but I actually want to go back here and I just want to expand here and I'm going to click on view and virus total. So let's take a look at virus total and get in lots of hits here. Uh, Mm, risk where potentially unwanted application um what is it malicious variant two bear so these looks like it's it's kind of adware ish right not really seeing anything like potentially unwanted program pup and pua <laughs> you know what i'm saying so potentially unwanted application potentially unwanted program adware so everything that i'm looking here kind of indicates that this is not necessarily something severe just something that's more annoying. A lot of times on uh, virus soda, like I said, I know a lot of people, including myself for years, never even looked at these other tabs. So I just want to kind of skim this information just to kind of get an idea. And you can see, look at the different names of it. So this definitely looks like it's randomly generated based on what I'm seeing here. So that's definitely of concern. And what I'm curious is like, was this actually packaged with the software or something like that? It shows the original name and the internal name. Okay. So let's look at relations. Does it give us anything? All right. So it's giving us a list of potential IP addresses that were associated with this. 
television with a fantastic setup. Well, that's that looks all oh, that looks really sketch. And this does not surprise me because you know in the era of DD, DVDs and CD pirating and burning CDs and stuff like that, that was a great ways for companies to be able to spread stuff all over. So the sandboxes, call the air assist internals. What it says, drop files. Network communication. Okay, so that's coming from the Microsoft Sys internals. Uh, let's look at Zenbox. Not familiar with this, but it's showing drop files. It's also showing network communication. This is uh, showing seven of the what modern attack. Modern attack is being used here. And let's just kind of scroll down. And of course, if you see something that I don't mention in a video, feel free to leave that in comments, and we'll take a. Uh, as a community, I'll read it and I'll respond, but also people who are reading and watching this video can also respond. Now looking at this, we can see the different registry keys that are open with this. So it looks like it's just basically creating certificates. And I mean, uh, so I guess allow it to be able to run without any kind of uh, approval or something like that. So honestly, just speculating, I'm not a malware analyst so i don't know i don't know exactly all the details when it comes to deconstructing the program all right so that's kind of what we're getting out of virus total oh we got one more tab here and this is one where the community kind of says what they think about it so they've dropped a file here i'm not going to necessarily click the link i'm not a hybrid analysis i know a little bit more about that so let's take a look here okay pattern match all right, I see that from hybrid analysis, but I'm not necessarily sure what that means. It's malicious. Only half of the vendors have detected it. Okay, so the community, I don't know if the community is really giving me enough to kind of make a final decision. That's fine. All right, so that being the case, all right, so I got all this information. I've looked here, and now let's go into the, the threat details, and let's take a look, because we can start to kind of drill down into the processes itself. And so we look through here, it gives us a lot of information on the program and stuff like that. Let's go to explore. No process found. Okay, so the reason we got nothing on this tab is because it is a static threat. This is not something that is currently executing. We detected it as a standalone file on the machine. And then we can kind of see the timeline of it. So we basically installed Sentinel-1. Looks like they did a, a full disk scan at that point. And uh, let's see. What are we doing here? OS family, Windows laptop. Okay, cool. Threat confidence level is malicious. Okay, so you can show more here. Looks like it's giving a hash there. Full disk scan to be initiated on the machine. All right, cool. So that being said, we're going to take it. And at this point, I'm going to go into Central One and we're going to start the mitigating action. So you've seen this in previous videos now. So the first thing you want to do, let's attempt to kill the process. Uh, and we're going to quarantine it and we're going to remediate it and we roll back and remember sentinel one takes snapshots so we're going to see if we can run all of these and then i'm not going to mark it as uh i can add it to the blacklist so that's not a good bad thing so we'll choose for that group we'll actually do it for the entire site we, if that's detected in the site again we want to make sure that that it can't do anything so now we're going to initiate those actions and as you see it's going to go ahead so binary has been saved successfully so now it's going through the process and what we're looking for is like these actions right here. So not a lot that's exciting. You see my basically is telling me black hash was added. So once again, I got all the logs turned on so I can kind of see what's happening. You can see analyst verdict changed. All right. So this is what's happening kind of in real time as these notifications are going through as it's trying to do containment. All right. So that's flip. Up. Okay. That's not related to symptom one that's related to real estate, which, uh, uh, or actually what Flipper is buying, what online business is something like that. So something I'm also interested in. But you can see it's also detected by the static engine. Now I'm curious because once again, I'm waiting for something to happen. I would expect that we have to have some success at this point. So we'll give it a couple more seconds to see if it comes through and then see if we're a actually able to successfully mitigate the threat. Okay, so one thing I was noticed is the device seems like it was in sleep mode. And of course, so I did. So it's something to note that you do need to make sure it's not in sleep mode because all these actions were just pinned. But it, and there we go, kill successfully. So once I just kind of tapped the screen or to wake it up from the sleep mode, then these actions took place. So that's something to note on the job if you are working on this. Maybe you want to turn that sleep mode off so you can see quarantine performed successfully. 
So we went through all of these are knocked out. So we want to go and say that we uh, basically we uh, uh, successfully. Let's see. Uh, what do we want to say? Mitigation. Or initiate it. All right. All right. What you say was successful. You know, and you want to be more detailed here. So one of the things I encourage you to do is to take the time and, and document as much as possible to kind of understand like all the details. And maybe if you don't have some kind of system to do it, you know, maybe you want to put like what we have found out about the threat, you know, the company and stuff like that. Just kind of information so we can reference this. Because what if this turns out to be something more serious later? You want to make sure that you provide it for yourself and for others who come up come in behind you a lot of information to be able to successfully like, you know, continue working on this, this is if necessary. And so you can see now that we've identified this as a true positive, we we're able to successfully mitigate everything. So we went through those steps that was all done successfully. And so one of the things I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and mark this as a resolved at this point, because I feel like we successfully contained the threat. And at this point, um, I feel certain that, hey, you know, my, my dad's computer is in good shape. But there's one thing I want to mention. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I want to go back here because one of the things I see when this, and I, you see that pending action in Sentinel-1, definitely take a note because see, the thing is some of the dynamic monitoring capabilities are not enabled because I just installed Sentinel-1. But what I didn't do is I didn't reboot the machine in order to allow all of the dynamic, because Sentinel-1 probably has to take control of certain processes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna initiate under, what is this, endpoint actions, and I'm gonna reboot the machine. I'll pause the video, we'll be back and see if we can clean this up. And then we want to perform another full disk scan to ensure that we have everything. Now, one of the things I noticed is I initiated the reboot several times. It didn't actually reboot through the console. So I'm going to show you something that I would typically do in that situation. I'm going to go to my remote shell and I'm going to log into the remote shell. All right, so go ahead. Oh, that, that's good. It actually caught the uh, code for me automatically. So now that I'm doing this, all right, so I'm checking the machine, still not rebooting. Let's see if we can connect through the remote shell because once again, it's disconnected from everything else, but it's still supposed to be connected to the Sentinel-1 console. And this will allow me to uh, be able to use some PowerShell commands to be able to reboot the machine. So also a good thing, because I, I encourage everybody to learn PowerShell and shell scripting. I think they're super, super important when it comes to cybersecurity compared to other languages. So we'll see, we'll let this spin for just a little bit. Once it comes up, we'll proceed with PowerShell. Okay, so just as I was about to initiate the PowerShell command, the computer actually started rebooting now. So this is not gonna connect. So I'm gonna stop the remote shell. And when it comes up, we'll check the dynamic monitoring capabilities again. All right, so we're back up and running, but it's still complaining about the dynamic uh, uh, monitoring capabilities being enabled, right? So and it need, any point needs to restart. So it's like it didn't register it. So I'm going to attempt to do, uh, what did I see? I'm going to try to restart services. So let's try that. And let's see if that helps with it. So we give that just a second. All right. So I just noticed that I initiated another reboot of the machine after it was already boot rebooted. And I can see that the message is cleared about the mon dynamic monitoring capability. So let's let this finish rebooting now and then we'll continue. Okay. So the computer finally finished this reboot, man. It took probably about 10 minutes. Once again, this is an old machine. We're talking about a Windows 8 uh, machine at this point. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and I want to take a quick look. I'm going to ahead and initiate another full disk scan just to make sure. And it looks like it's already doing it. See, if I can't initiate it, the selected agents are already scanning. So once the dynamic capability is enabled, it's going to do another full disk scan. Another thing I want to look at here is the applications, right? So let's go to our, our application section. And here for this machine, since I only got it here, I don't have to filter down or anything, but I can see what I currently have installed. So iTunes, Shockwave Player, HP Support System, Google Chrome needs to be updated, Office got an old version there. CyberLink probably will uninstall that. McAfee will get rid of that because we now have Sentinel-1. Uh, HP System Event Utility may get rid of all of that unless they have updated versions that we can keep up to date. McAfee Web Advisor will definitely get rid of that and cyber like the label print. So the thing is, not only do I want to mitigate the malware, but I also want to like take this time to re like remediate and remove any vulnerabilities that exist on the machine. So that it decreases the probability of uh, my dad getting infected again. So if this video was helpful, I wanted to maintain it. Hopefully it was simple enough for everybody to understand and feel confident that you can work in Sentinel-1 and didn't do incident response. 
Also, don't forget to take a list and learn and commit this to heart. Okay, this is something that you need to know. If you're working in cybersecurity in any capacity, you need to understand this. And I think Sentinel One has done a great job on this article. So, and if you love this channel, and hey, by the way, tell me what you want to hear and what you want to see next. If it's a tool I own, I can do it. If it's something that's Sentinel One, you want to deep dive, let me know. But give me some feedback in the comments. Y'all are real quiet. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.